Welcome to High Point Community Church, where our mission is to make Christ's way of life our way of life. We welcome you into our church family, knowing that you matter to God and you matter to us. So we invite our family, friends, neighbors, and strangers, whether you are near or far, to join us in our worship experience. Hello, High Point Community Church. This is Pastor Austin coming to you today. It's so good to be here with you on this Wednesday as we are about to hear from Pastor Tim on, on his weekly devotional for us and an encouraging message. I want to bring a few things to your attention today before we hear from him and just to encourage you as you serve in, in your community. And we are so honored that you have chosen to be Jesus' hands and feet this week. We are uh, thrilled to know that you guys are reaching out to your community and making sure that people are taken care of, and it is such a good thing to know uh, that we're we're doing what Jesus has called us to do. One thing I do want to remind you of as we as we continue to take part in the social distancing and we're not meeting as a church on Sunday mornings, we want to encourage you to take part in the Sunday morning. Uh, services that have been recorded for you and the Wednesday devotionals that are being recorded for you and use these as a time for encouragement and being together. I do want to remind you that the church in this time still has things to pay for and still has people to reach out to and, and to support physically and uh, financially. So we want to encourage you to give of your tithes and offerings as if you were doing this on a regular basis, weekly or monthly. And you can do that through our website, Breeze. And there's a very simple process in doing that, and uh, this will greatly help your church, help us to reach other people, and help us to pay our bills uh, while during this time that we're not meeting. This week, we have a great opportunity to reach out to our community. Uh, we, we've been in contact with some folks at Metro Health Hospital and, and ways that we can help them to, to help those who have been affected by this COVID-19 crisis and still those who have regular needs that aren't affected by necessarily this this virus has been going around. One thing that they are critically low on are surgical masks and hand sanitizer. So we want to challenge you as our church and our community. We've been in contact with other churches and we're collecting those two things this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday during office hours at High Point Community Church's building. We'll be distributing those things to Metro Health uh, sometime Thursday or Friday. So we want to encourage you to get those things in before we deliver them. So before we hear from Pastor Tim, I, I want to take this time to pray for you and with you and ask that God would open up our hearts and minds to hearing his voice today. Pray with me. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ways in which you're working in this world and the ways in which you're encouraging us and enabling us to go out and be your hands and feet into our community. God, we ask that we would take full advantage of this time to love others and to show them who you are because people are really reaching out for hope right now. And we pray that you would be that hope for them through our actions and our words, God. And and uh, we ask that today that you would speak to Pastor Tim and through him to our hearts and our minds, that you would open us up to some encouragement today and to filling us up so that we can be your church. And God, we thank you for this opportunity uh, to hear his words and to hear your words. And we just ask that you would uh, use us this week as we go from here. We pray all these things in your wonderful, precious name. Amen. Hi, family. This is the Wednesday morning teaching following up uh, last Sunday's teaching. And last Sunday, we talked about uh, finding purpose in the valleys, the fact that the valleys are, are temporary and they're not made to last uh, forever, uh, but that we can find purpose in those valleys and those valleys can be a place of, of replenishment. In this video, we want to talk about sort of a part two of that uh, Psalm 23, verse 4, which I hope by now you have um, internalized Psalm 23, memorized Psalm 23, um, that it's been a great comfort to you, and that it's helped you lead you through this season of uncertainty. And so we're going to do sort of a part two of that, talking more about valleys um, when we hear the words, the Lord is my shepherd, Jehovah Jireh is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In the last video, we talked about 
the valley of Baca, and it was a place of weeping. Um, it's a desert place, but there was water seeping through the crags of the rocks, and it looked like tears. And so um, the children of Israel, uh, according to Psalm 84, it talks about how the children of Israel made it a place of refreshing springs. And while it can be a place of weeping, it can also be a place of re refreshing springs. And we as, as gospel people, as um, Easter people, if you will, uh, we're called to look at things differently than the rest of the world would, where we look at things in a hopeful way, where we say um, the valley of weeping doesn't have to be the valley of weeping for forever. The valleys are temporary. And today I want to talk about another valley that is mentioned in Scripture. It's mentioned uh, six different times. Uh, the Valley of Achor, which is really a valley of trouble, a valley of, of, of trauma, kind of echoing that verse 4 of, um, of Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. My shepherd is with me. Jehovah Jireh is with me. The Lord who provides all for me is with me. But this Valley of Achor, mentioned uh, six different times in the Old Testament, the first time is from Joshua chapter 7, talks, talking about the sin of Achan. Uh, Achan uh, was a leader in the children of Israel from the tribe of Judah, uh, but he had stolen uh, the devoted things. And when you see the phrase devoted things, it all pertains to the worship of God or the children of God pursuing God. But he had stolen quite a bit. In fact, um, Joshua chapter 7 talks about he had, the fact that he had stolen uh, 200 shekels of silver and 50 um, shekels of, of gold and also a, a fine robe uh, that was taken. And we know in Old Testament days that uh, someone would have to work four months for 30 shekels of gold. So he stole the equivalent of like three years worth of labor. So quite a bit he had taken. Well, the story unfolds that the children of Israel had just conquered Jericho. And of course, whenever you conquer a, a city, um, that news spreads throughout the land. And, and so there's great fear uh, put in the minds of people that the children of Israel would then go to conquer as they're seeking to uh, take the promised land. Well, they go to Ai, which literally is spelled A and then I. Um, they go to this town, they use a smaller force of about 3,000 men. Well, they, they lost that battle. In fact, they got run out of town and 36 men had died. Well, Joshua had uh, pursued God and asked, you know, what have we done? Why, why did we not win this battle? We should, certainly should have won this, this battle. And God revealed that it's the sin of Achan. The Achan had stolen from him. So Joshua goes and pursues Achan and Achan confesses and ultimately um, is killed because of his treachery because what Achan had done had caused the death of 36 other people. This is a valley of trouble. This is a valley of trauma. This is a valley of, of, of sin, of hardship. I look at what's happening in our world now with this virus that's caused by somebody else and causing the pain and death of, of so many people and the sickness of, of count, countless others. It's the sin of somebody else that causes the pain of other innocent people. It's exactly the same story of the sin of Achan. So how do we view this time as people of hope? How do we look at a situation like the situation that we're in now as people of hope? How do, how do we view this in a, in a way that's different than the world? And we know from, from Psalm uh, 84, that uh, the Valley of Baca was viewed ultimately as a place of refreshing springs. Is it possible that the Valley of Achan can also, uh, or the Valley of Achor um, and the sin of Achan could also be redeemed, could be uh, restored? And where we can view this even situation with great hope again. Well, the great thing about uh, the gospel is spread throughout the Old Testament as well. The book of Hosea, chapter 2, has this great uh, story that talks about the Valley of Achor. And 
the prophet Hosea prophesied in the northern kingdom, right before, he was the last prophet in the northern kingdom before they were uh, overcome or conquered by Syria. But Hosea is told by God to marry a prostitute, Gomer. And because Gomer would reflect perfectly the sin of the children of Israel, that they've been unfaithful to God. And so it's a symbol, Gomer's life is a symbol of the children of Israel as they had sort of left God behind and been unfaithful. And so the prophet Hosea prophesies, and he talks about the Valley of Achor. There's this beautiful prophecy of the Valley of, of Achor, where the Valley of Achor is no longer viewed as a place of, of hardship. It's no longer viewed as a place of, of desolation, but now it's viewed as a place of mercy and abundance. In fact, it uses the word, the phrase, it now is a door of hope. I love that. He says here, Hosea chapter 2, verse, verses 14 and 15. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. There, Gomer is used metaphorically to speak about the children of Israel, God's people. I will speak tenderly to her. And then he says this, and there I will give her her vineyards and make the valley of Achor a door of hope. You see the gospel throughout this whole thing. In John 16, uh, Jesus says, um, you'll face trouble in the world. You'll face tribulation in the world. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Everything I've done on the cross of spreading my arms wide for the purpose of redemption is for the purpose where you don't have to view everything in a in a horrible, awful way, where life can be redeemed. That even sin that's horrible, like Achan's Achan sin, where 36 men died. If you could imagine knowing these men and knowing the fact that these were comrades, these were brothers, um, they had families where they lost their lives because of what Achan had done. But even that story can be redeemed. We are the people of hope. And it's almost as if God is saying, I want you to wave that banner of hope in this season. I, I want you to be a people on a quest to be people of hope in a, in a season of great uncertainty. I want you to be a people that clings to hope. So a couple of, of words of encouragement to you as you navigate this season. I want you to think not about the lack of the mountain, the lack of uh, not being on the mountaintop, but I want you to think of the presence of the shepherd, the presence of the shepherd who would guide the sheep and lead the sheep and feed the sheep. That's who we're listening to, and that's who we're following. I also want you to think about the permanence of eternity and what we're given, the promise of the kingdom that begins even now in this day and age, but extends throughout all time. The book of Colossians has this great sort of benediction given to us that talks about the fact that we need to lean into this promise that's given to us in this day and age. Live in the reality of what has been given to us. He says this in Colossians 1 verses 11 through 14. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. For all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you, listen to this, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. He's delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Isn't that beautiful and isn't that hopeful and isn't it something that we need to lean into and to cling to with all of our heart in this season of uncertainty? Second Corinthians says the same thing where, you know, we're, we're people who are frail and we need a shepherd. We, we, we're not indestructible. Uh, we need help. And Second Corinthians chapter 4 talks about us being like our, like our bodies are in in treasures in jars of clay. He says, 
We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Now listen to these words. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but not driven to despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifest in our bodies. And then he goes on, verse 16, toward the bottom. So we do not lose heart, though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The scripture calls us to be people of faith. And when I use the word faith, I like to use the word trust. It makes more sense to me. I understand what that means. I, I, I want to trust God. I want to trust him with all, with all things. And Hebrews 11 talks about the nature of trust, the nature of a life of faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. It's where I have this firm conviction that God will deliver us from this, that he will be the one to sustain us and carry us through this season. It may be tumultuous, it may be ups and downs, but I'm trusting in the one who has overcome the world. The third thing I want you to focus in, not, not only the fact that, not focusing on the, the lack of the mountaintop experience, but the presence of the shepherd, but also secondarily the the permanence of the reward given to us. But thirdly, I want you to put your hope in someone, not in something. Our circumstances will change, but the shepherd will not. The shepherd will feed us and lead us and guide us into all eternity, starting in this day and lasting forever. I want to encourage you in that way to put your hope in Psalm 23, verse 4, that says, the reason I will not fear is because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We know the rod is used as a weapon hanging down from a shepherd's belt, a weapon to defend against enemies of the sheep. But it also has a staff to help guide the sheep and direct the sheep on where to go and where to walk. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We have a great hope that we can cling to, and it's in someone not in some thing. I know there's often said that there's 365 statements, do not be afraid or do not fear throughout scripture. One for every day of the year. Do not be afraid. And it's not as if there's nothing to fear. It's the fact that we can put our great comfort in the shepherd who is with us through these circumstances that can be changing all the time. We cling to the one who has promised to never leave us nor forsake us and who has demonstrated his love on the cross by giving his life for you and for me. Even when we were sinners to him, he loved us and redeemed us. Friends, I hope that you pursue this season as if God has given you a personal mission to wave the banner of hope, to be a person of hope, to cling to hope for your own life, but also for those that we love, those that we're praying for, for healing and for God to touch and to find a cure to all of this, this mess. I pray that God would give you a burden where you are a person of hope, where maybe you can encourage your neighbor in such a way, baking cookies or loaf of bread or sending a gift card anonymously and just say, hey, just I just want to bless you. Maybe you can uh, help volunteer in the schools uh, as they're passing out free meals. Um, we're doing a, also a fundraiser or um, uh, where we're collecting, not really a fundraiser, but it's more of uh, collecting hand sanitizers or masks that we can donate to the area hospital. I want to thank you also, just as a pastor, those of you who have been giving faithfully, so we as a church can also bless our community and just praise God for your faithfulness in this whole endeavor. We'll get through this. I promise you we will. 
and we're going to be stronger in the end. I feel like we're getting sort of to an early church uh, standpoint. We can't be together. There's persecution, in essence, in this case, a, a virus that's keeping us away. But boy, can we lean in to the shepherd of all of our souls, wherever we are, asking him to provide and to deliver. And I know he will. God bless you. Be at peace. May you keep pursuing him. We're going to keep reaching out and encouraging you. If you need prayer, if you need encouragement, please call us, uh, text us, or uh, reach out in some way, Pastor Austin uh, or myself. And we just want to encourage you along your journey. God bless you and be at peace. Amen. Hi, friends. If you're watching this on YouTube, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. That way you won't miss any of our teachings. Also, give us a thumbs up if you would, and that'll help us reach more people and encourage more people. Thanks so much. God bless and be at peace.